Hey, welcome to the podcast, Niraj. Thank you for having me. For anyone that doesn't know you, who do you say you are? Ah, uh, well, I am an ex engineer turn or er, ex engineer turn teacher, um, an educator, uh, a dog dad, an adventurer, and a dreamer. Nice. I guess we we were just kind of catching up. We both graduated from uh, University of the Georgia Institute of Technology, ah, Georgia yes. Tech, for sure. <laughs> That's a good. Uh, yeah, that was one of the things that we we joked on, right? We were there it's at university. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess in doing that, um, can you remind me what you studied and why you transferred from engineering to teaching? I think that's yeah. very commendable. For sure. So I uh, started uh, at Southern Polytech, um, which is no longer a school. Um, Kennesaw State bought that out. Yep. And yep. Oh, um, that's why I'm repping the, the Pure Bliss Ultimate Frisbee. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah Ultimate. Oh, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I was at Southern Poly. I was at the campus of Marietta for like a year and a half. Uh, always wanted to go to Georgia Tech. So I uh, did all my classes, all my hard, quote unquote, math classes at Southern Poly, mm -hmm. um, year and a half, and I transferred to Georgia Tech to pursue some type of engineering, didn't know what it was, and when I got to campus, uh, I just started taking, I remember Physics 2, uh, MATLAB, all that craziness, mm -hmm. um, and decided after a physics lab, when the light bulb went off on the circuit, a light bulb went off in my head that this was the way to go, electricity is so cool, um, and it's like a little black magic, and I want to see what, what goes on, so... <laughs> uh yeah and little did i know it got harder harder and harder and um it got more black magic-y mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was interesting it was it was a hard time um it, it it humbled you going to Georgia tech as you know um coming in from all walks of life all people from all over the world uh yeah. coming to to a beautiful university and, and just you know studying and, and being supportive and, and trying to do the best you can that's awesome and and I guess I'd forgotten that you also went to Spusu. I, I went there for three, I think almost close to three and a half years before transferring oh, wow. to tech to finish up for the last two and a half. But um, similar to you, I, I try to do all my hard math classes there. I mm -hmm. think I did um, differential equations and linear algebra were like the last ones. I think I got through like Calc 3. And by that point, it was just like, this stuff is 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 interesting, but I I went the civil engineering route, and I liked like the statics, dynamics. Yes. I had to retake some of those classes at Tech because they didn't accept them. But just like being introduced to different people from different walks of life, like similar from Southern Poly, but just like you're on a a bigger stage at Tech, and it's just like okay, like similar things is going through class. Like classes are kind of set up the same, professors there. Um, well versed in their disciplines and it's like when you take away the dauntingness of like this is a big school it's like mm. it's like it's just new material it's harder but it's not anything we haven't done before it's not anything we can't do but it's it's cool that you found that little that little spark that's just like oh, okay like I like this even though it's harder like I can I feel like I can still do this oh yeah like that's uh I still remember my first mat mat lab class it was like I don't know about you, but when you went to Southern Poly, it felt like that's college, and you're like, "That's that's what it is." Okay, I can do this. And you go to yeah. Georgia Tech, and like the first test or the first quiz, you're like, "Wow, this is a whole different level." Mm. Um, and it was it was scary, right? It's like I thought I figured out college, I thought I figured out Calc three, linear algebra, all of these things, and right. then you get to Georgia Tech, and you see the standards kind of raise, mm -hmm. um, and you had to re rethink about what hard means or rigor means or studying means. Mm -hmm. uh, so right. that was a that was a lost lost art for me until I got to tech. Man, talk I guess talk about that a, a little bit more because it it's like sometimes I think I'm some things are quick for me to forget or or I like <laughs> try and put them so far behind my mind. I'm yeah. like there was a transition that needed to be made. Yeah, it was uh it was like the willingness to accept and understand that you needed help was hard because uh, Southern Poly was easy in a way because it was straightforward. It was like, okay, here's what the test is. You're good. Professors were, you know, kind of 
good at what they did on just like giving you what you needed and then like you got the test i still remember like a calc 2 class it was like here's what's on the test and it was on the test it was like great right um and nothing wrong with georgia tech style but this georgia tech style was like your bar is here you're here you got to get here like i can help you but like you have to do it yourself otherwise you right. get left behind so the the hard part for me was like seeing that um, mm -hmm. after the first test and understanding how to get to that point. Um, and that was the day I realized that I need to go to you know office hours every day. I need to like, I didn't like read the book or anything before, but I just had to devote some time um, right. to understanding how to reach to that level. Yeah. And I think to your point, for me, it seemed like that, that sense, I guess they say you need to spend twice as much studying for the class as you do in the class so like if you have a one hour class you're going to spend two hours outside mm -hmm. of the class studying the material and like preparing for the test and it's like yeah you, you got to do that because otherwise yeah. you, you're you going to get left behind yeah that's kind of my teaching philosophy too is you know if you, everyone wants an a mm -hmm. everyone wants to do well but here's what you got to do and if you don't do it you can't be mad you didn't get you didn't get it Right. You just got to get better. Like, I'm not, I'm not giving out A's. I'm not giving out B's. You deserve those A's and B's by showing me that you, you can work. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, that's fine too. be, be, be okay with that. Um, there's a lot of students that come into my class that are like, oh, well, I, I love math. I like, that's great. Do you love math enough to do what's needed to get to the A in my class? Mm -hmm. um, and of course I'll help them and stuff, but it's just a, it made me understand as a teacher of how to deliver the best student like but the best way for a kid to learn mm -hmm. and after going through it at tech I was like wow if you really try you can literally get this grade you want and yeah. you'll be just just as happy because you did what you needed to do is no one's handing you stuff and right. uh, it feels so good to just pass sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it felt like to me as I remember kind of looking back it, it really does feel like we're we're reminiscing it somewhat but it's like um I think tech is a good or just like high level university is a good way of reminding you that this is how the world will kind of treat you. Like life is going to give you what it's going to give you. A lot of things may hit you up at the same time where you feel like the professors are conspiring together because you're, you've already picked out your major, you know what you're studying. This is like the track. This is the discipline. It's like, okay, you have so much time allocated to your coursework. You need to be looking at internships. You need to um, be talking with community with um, with businesses you need to make yourself marketable because like this fall I'll be going back that way but it it's funny to be able to 10 years later be on the opposite end of where I was before where it was like I'd tried years before to attend a career fair to get an internship or to get a co-op but it's like I had to sit down and be honest with myself that fall of 2020 of 2013 and just be like what I've been trying hasn't been working and mm -hmm. I need to talk to an expert, like a student that's successfully gotten results back to back. They said they wanted to work this job. They did their interviews. They worked that job. They went through the interview process at the career fair, talked to so many companies and they got like the end result. And when I just had that light bulb go off and I asked, I literally got the information I needed. Like I still needed to study the information, but I went with a completely different plan of execution where it was like, I'm going to miss this class in order to go um, basically present myself to get a job offer. I talked to mm -hmm. like 24 companies within like two hours, went around and then ended up getting an offer from a company I happened to talk to back in the spring semester. And again, it was just on a co-op, mm -hmm. happened to have some time off working on call and it just... I was helping with um, my my college to say, hey, if you guys need any help setting up or anything like that, I'll be there. And then I just happened to talk to one of the companies that was there. And I was like, I'll be graduating in the fall. They're like, yeah, we'll be back. And from that, not expecting or thinking anything of it, but like thinking differently, approaching the situation different, saying, I have to get an outcome from this. I actually... I think that's what led me to pursue it differently and ultimately come out with the first job out of college. Yeah, I love that you said that because in the end, what are you in college for? 
right? Like studying is one thing. I uh, excuse me. I realized I wasn't as smart, quote unquote, as other students, but I realized I'm not as awkward as some of them too. <laughs> I was like, I do, I can talk, I can speak, I can, you know, communicate. Yeah. Um, and I was like, what can I do to be different? Yeah. And after about like a semester and a half, I, went, I was there spring semester, then summer, uh, I started applying to be an RA, started to be like, you know, social type of things. Yeah. And I finally got a volunteer position to be a tour guide. And it was, I did that for five semesters and it was actually really cool because I got to realize like what people came into Georgia Tech thinking mm -hmm. and I could like get their brain, like, well, what, what do you think about Georgia Tech? And a lot of students were like, if I go here, I get a job. Like that was it. It wasn't like work. It was just like Georgia Tech degree, I get a job. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, makes sense. I'm in it. That's my goal. And my older friends were graduating with like really high GPAs. Uh, from what I could tell and they weren't getting jobs and I was like wait you're a great student why aren't you getting jobs he's like well the feedback was I don't have any internships I don't have any co-ops I just study right whoa and you I was didn't like set that's yourself all apart yeah you didn't set yourself apart and I was like let me let me you know, dive deeper into that so I went to career fairs and stuff like that just like you and um one of the internships I went to uh or one of the interviews I went to sorry uh i still remember this and like this this lit a fire under me because i was so excited for this process um uh, my gpa was low mm -hmm. and at the time and still was when i graduated and they interviewed me they're like look you're a great candidate for our internship program mm -hmm. but if there's another person that has the similar like stuff you have but a higher gpa we're gonna have to take them yeah and i was like really and I came back and I was like, who am I? What is this? And I realized that company values something that I don't value, which is mm -hmm. just grades. Mm -hmm. And that's not right for me. I need to bust my butt to find a company that understands my values and who I am and what can I bring to them rather than trying to say, hey, here's me. I can, I can mold myself into what you want mm -hmm. and lose yourself in that process. That's what I saw a lot of tour, tourees uh, yeah. wanting to do. It's like, I just want to fit. I want to fit the uh, the mold of the school, but I guess that's why it seems like there's a big emphasis on having, um, how would you call it? Like there's a culture of a school or there's a culture of a company. Like people talk about that. This is our culture. Mm -hmm. This is, these are our values. And I think they kind of espouse that to let people know, like, these are our standards. Like it's up mm -hmm. to you to match the standards or see if our standards meet that way it's like we'll know we either start out at the honeymoon phase and like we'll be getting a divorce real quick or yeah. like if this is a long-term partnership where you can see someone working somewhere for like 40 years and so on and so forth it's like okay like some people may be stuck other people may have just found the right fit for them and it, it just continues to work yeah yeah it's it's funny how you say like a honeymoon phase and stuff because like you're also interviewing them right like do i see yeah. myself in that company and a lot of students that I've mentored, you know, during the short tech years, they're like, what can I say to be on their side? Like, what can I do to make them understand that I want to be there? And I was like, don't sell yourself, just be yourself. And yeah. if they like you, they like you. Um, I still remember uh, going to freaking uh, career fairs or Samsung mm -hmm. and Apple and Facebook Tesla. at the time, Tesla. Or oh, not Tesla, Tesla, but SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX. Yeah, SpaceX. Oh my yeah. gosh, the line was outfit. like around. <laughs> like people just lined up, and I was like, I'm glad I'm not an aerospace yeah, person. I but like, I was like, I'm gonna go over here to the people that yes, don't have anybody figure absolutely. out what they're about. Oh my gosh, yeah. I was like, this is crazy, and um, I have so I got so much swag. It was it was so much fun for though. But you're right, like sacrificing some class time uh, yeah. to do those things. It was such a beautiful opportunity. And yeah. at tour guide, or when I was tour guiding, I was like, y'all need to understand that like school is one thing, but you got to like, go to internships. You got to study abroad. You got to do all these things because yeah. life is changing as we know it. And like just getting a 4-0 does not mean anything. Right. And the important thing about that is actually learning to live life and not just like, yeah. I'm going to school. This is all I'm going to do. And then the mm -hmm. school is going to give me the job. It's like, if you don't do anything, not saying you have to go out and party or like, but like playing an intramural sport or like yes. just trying an activity, joining a club, joining something. It's like, oh, you learn things about yourself or you develop yes. your interests, you develop your tastes. And then eventually you meet someone that you may connect with. And it's like, 
having one friend from college or someone that you can still talk to or like a call, like just someone that's like, oh, we have something that we related to. It goes a long way versus just feeling alone in the world. And it's just like, like, I got to figure this out. Life is hard. Life is difficult. But it's like, if you at least know one other person, it, it mm -hmm. doesn't feel as as like difficult and isolated. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like that that was one of the things at Georgia Tech that probably got me through, right? Like friends and 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 family and whatnot. And like being alone in anything you do, right? Like you could be a billionaire and then have no friends and like you're right. unhappy. And I just listened to a podcast. I listened to too many, but they're talking about like what's happiness. Yeah. And he was like, the like being happy throughout the process mm. is the way to be as happy as you can in life because like if uh, I think Draymond Green was saying this, he was like, when we won the championship, that happiness lasts like a week, mm -hmm. but it took us eight months to get there. Like yeah. if we're miserable for eight months leading up to the championship, it's not worth it. So you have to understand the intricacies of life and the ways that you have to, you know, you sometimes grind, but sometimes relax yeah. uh, into that process. Cause if you're seeking that at the pinnacle, like graduation or whatever, like it's just, you're just shooting yourself in the foot and not enjoying yeah. your present here and now. <laughs> I remember a friend shared it with me and I, I think I kind of shared it with him. It's like graduation day feels like you're getting out of jail. <laughs> you're like, I'm finally free. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh man. Graduation was crazy. I, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was a, that was a day. Cause that was like, it, it was a reality check, but for me, it was just another checkbox because I busted my butt so hard to get a full-time job. So we, gra I graduated in May of 2014 and i got my job offer in october of 2013 nice uh sorry yeah 2013 yeah and i'll share that process because that was wild so at Georgia tech um i had two internships and a study abroad mm -hmm. and then um so i applied like i had like three cycles of applications mm -hmm. and i'm not sure if you remember but like at the end of our career at Georgia tech they uh at career buzz or whatever that platform they had yeah yeah they they actually put down how many applications you've submitted and oh. it, it wasn't there until like I was about to leave and it it went back to like hey you here's you've been on this platform for this long here's how many applications so check these numbers out this is crazy mm -hmm. so so my job I applied to two th three things in my whole career so three three stages of uh, of, of applications I submitted 500 applications out of all of those 500, I got 50 interviews. And of, out of those 50 interviews, I got six offers. Wow. What a ratio. Yeah. Well, that, that's an honest ratio. <laughs> the, and yeah. And yeah. I was like, there's people out there that say, I can't get a job. And I'm like, hold up. I have a, a below three GPA. I had all these things against me. But what I thought about was I'm going to apply four times more. I'm going to have the choices of finding a place that I fit in. I'm going right. to deny things. I'm going to apply to things. I'm going to get interview preps. I love interviews by the end of it. It was so much fun for me. Mm. And that's why I got what I got. And I was happy in my job because of the way that I you know, applied myself. So that was a crazy stat. I was like, dang, that's how many places I clicked apply to? 500. <laughs> that, is, that is wild. Like, man, because it's like... um not to compare it, but just like looking at the ratio of it, I remember to just talk to, like talking to 25 companies in one day, like face to face, being mm -hmm. being on your feet for four hours, it yeah. felt like, man, you really had to condition yourself to this. And, and to the point of what you brought up about learning to interview the interviewer, mm -hmm. like asking them like why is it that you want me like what why is this position open like asking probing questions where it's like oh like this is a this is a two-way street it's not just mm -hmm. you're trying to chase after them like yep they have to understand that like there are other companies vying for your attention too so like you have something to offer and just the fact that 90 percent of your applications can be a rejection rate. And it's it's nothing against you. Maybe you're not the criteria they're looking for. Maybe they don't even see the resume, but it's like you have to go through that rejection process to give yes. yourself a chance to have an opportunity because you said 500 to 50 
to six, six <laughs> like to be like, hey, okay, six people at six companies out of 500 decided that they were going to enter entertain you. And then they like provided an offer of which you could say, okay, I can choose from this one, this one, or that one. But it's like, if you only have one, like, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm too proud to work. So I'm just going to keep hoping for the right thing to show up. Or it's like, oh no, I got to go with the one that picked me and not be bitter about it. Like I can't be on social, just be like, I hate my job. It's like, maybe they don't like you either. So so like, don't, don't make it such like a, a bad thing, but I love that stat you gave out. The the social is so interesting because that's like, like we're so quick to post, right? Uh, like, oh my God, look at this. And yeah. <laughs> uh, my Instagram and my socials after college, I like realized I want to inspire others to, to do things. Mm-hmm. So I do a lot of hiking snaps or Instagram posts or nothing like whatever, like career stuff. And like, there's a background to the career stuff. Like I, I, there's so much stuff I went through and I finally were in a place that I'm like, wow, I'm so proud of where I did, but just sharing the story of miserableness of like understanding, like, am I, do I belong at this company? Do I belong at this? Like, am I, am I a Georgia Tech student? Mm-hmm. Do I belong here? Like, did I just squeeze my way in? Like, did they just make a mistake and now I'm at Georgia <laughs> Tech, you know? Uh, which there's a podcast I listened to yesterday and this guy went to Harvard Business School mm-hmm. and they have a joke at Harvard being like, they, they're the mistake child. <laughs> they're like, they go to Harvard, like, dude, these are so much smarter. How do I get it? I'm a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that, no matter what school you go to, everyone feels that way, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. Is that, is that imposter syndrome? And yeah. it's cool because I actually talked to someone from Australia about that. And it's like, I, that same thing I felt it like week one orientation you're meeting students from other places it's a company of like 40,000 plus people and like a lot of people just seem more like prepared rehearsed they had some family Mm -hmm. history where it's like other people are engineers and like it's just it's just another day and like kind of learning to shed some of that for myself has been like has been part of the journey and being able to do this and just realize how many people I've met or how many people I have the opportunity to meet and practice soft skills, practice maintaining relationships or just asking better questions to be Mm -hmm. like, okay, like I'm not the little kid that went to like um, Southern Poly at 2008. Like I'm not the little kid that just like was scared to be at Georgia Tech or like finally found his, his tribe. But like throughout the process, it's been, it's been um, endearing to see that like you, you change ever so slightly and it's Mm -hmm. like, you just develop, you you never know what it's going to turn into, but just being willing to give it a try, like make an effort. If something's not going right, like being honest about it and being like, okay, maybe, maybe it's time to do something else. Maybe it's, it's time to go another way or like think about this again or like, okay is this really worth the effort or like, okay, wait, I, okay. I think I belong here. I think I belong here. Like I'll, I'll figure it out or I'll, I'll find yeah. my way. Which, which I love that I'll figure it out because we always have to reflect on like, did we figure it out? It's like, yeah, we're here. <laughs> like, yeah. And I just thought about when you're saying what you said about like a flow chart and, you know, as engineers, you think about, you know, processes and it's like, you know, I feel betrayed or I feel uh, like an imposter. Mm-hmm. How, how do you belong here? Uh, what did you do to get here? Like, you know, like a flow chart, like, and the yeah. very end of it is you belong here, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like a flow chart in your mind of like, just convincing yourself that you felt this way before. And right. you've also did well. And like, what made you do what you did? And it, it's a reflectionary thing that I've, I need to get better at too. Uh, Cause as a teacher, my gosh, like there's days where I'm like, wow, that lesson sucked. Mm. And I go back home and I'm like, man, I can't do this. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I've been here. For, I've done this for five years. I'm fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> kids will be okay. You know, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> so tell me, how, how'd you get into teaching and what'd you decide to teach? Oh man. So, so Georgia Tech, that was fun. Uh, and in my culture, uh, my parents are from India. So they immigrated here in like 1989 um, to, for a better life. And they, in our culture, we want to be um, doctor, lawyer, engineer. And as a kid, I was like, absolutely, let's go. Yeah. Uh, doctor, 
heck no, can't do blood. Uh, hate hospitals, still do. <laughs> uh, lawyer, too much reading, man. What you mean? I, you want me to read? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, even like the Harry Potter books after like the first book, I saw I got more and more. I'm like, uh -uh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't like it that much. Uh, engineer was like an interesting term, but none of my family that immigrated here uh, was an engineer. Like my oldest cousin, that was like my brother to me, uh, uh, struggled, but he became like an accountant, like a top executive at a, at a firm right now. Yeah. And so like, I was the only one and I was like, you know what, this is the right thing to do. Let's go to Georgia Tech, let's fly. So after graduation, um, it was one of those like, now what moments? <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm an engineer. Do I know everything now? I don't know. Um, and my dad was happy. My parents were happy. It was great. I went into Schneider uh, Electric, uh, a company, and uh, I was their sales engineer. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. They gave me a company car, a company card. Uh, like, it was just awesome. It was in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so when I was there, uh, it was cool because we trained with other fresh grads. So like we learned about all of the suites of Schneider and like everything it was great. Like it was just a bunch of young people together. Yeah. And then we got out. So we started selling or I started selling uh, uh, OEM. So it's that, I forgot the word, like what that stands for, but like manufacturers, mm -hmm. I sold them like electrical products that we had. Um, so it was really cool. So I was like going all the, over the Southwest or Southeast, sorry, uh, Georgia, mm -hmm. Carolinas, fun stuff. And after I was going through all these places, I was like, man, this is cool. I love talking to people. I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I love learning. Um, and out of 100 engineering manufacturing places, I saw the lack of diversity, um, like lack of color and lack of women. There's mm -hmm. nobody there. Yeah. And like, it was eye opening. I was like, okay, I've been to like, I've been to a lot of places and mm -hmm. I don't see that. Mm -hmm um so I came back home and I was like man something's not right like I feel like there can be more women and and people of color in this field mm -hmm. and I did some research and realized like it's such a small percentage of people that become it but also start to think it mm -hmm. and I was like how can I impact society in a way where like I am an engineer I've done the hard stuff but inspire others to do the same thing mm -hmm. and the best avenue I thought at the time was teaching and my couple of my college friends or yeah, college friends were teachers. And I was like, Hey, could I shadow you in a classroom? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, of course. And then one thing led to another and I went to Clarkston, Georgia. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that area, but that's a high refugee place. Mm -hmm. So a lot of refugees go to Clarkston, Georgia, and there's a high school there. And this was like the most profound moment for me. And this is why I pursued what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, there was like, 15 different cultures like people from all over the place and it was just thriving like you go into the school and it's just amazing to see all the different cultures and there was a girl uh in one of the classes I was shadowing and like I introduced myself I think I wore the same shirt uh <laughs> there and she's about to graduate and um she was like excuse me sir uh so I'm about to graduate and I was gonna go to Georgia Tech but like I heard and I want to do automotive 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 engineering mm -hmm. And she's like, but I heard girls can't do that. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. And it's nothing the fault of, you know, her parents. Or they don't know any better. Right. Uh, they, don't, they don't know any engineers. They just came to this country. So that, what, what's going on, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I was like, no, of course, you know, there's a lot of girls uh, that pursue all types of engineering. And uh, you could definitely do it. Mm -hmm. And it was that at that moment, I was like, man, people need to know that that's possible. Right. And that's when I, I, it clicked to me and I started, I started applying to different colleges in the West coast. Cause why not? It's the West coast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got a scholarship at ASU uh, to, to pursue master's in math education. Oh, nice. Not, not yeah. a bad choice either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was yeah, the second part, which I totally forgot. Yeah. How do you inspire engineers? Yeah. Math. <laughs> <laughs> and like the way you think about math, not just like, here's the answer. No, that's stupid. You know, it's right. how do you get there? Explain it to me, like all those level details. So I like that. I like that. I, I like, I like how you, you described it and, and how that kind of played out for you. I, I haven't, I don't know if I've thought about that, the same thing. Why, why are there less people of color? But I think part of it when I think about it for myself, it's like maybe 
at times like it's easy to talk yourself out of something but then mm. I, I kind of play with that fine line of like am I trying to find an easy way out or am I trying to find something that I really like because mm. like coming out of college I went into um I went to work for a construction company which is like a construction civil engineering company and they've been around for like close to 130 years I think they may have gotten bought out or like merged recently but it was like kind of the, the same thing when you get out and you figure out there's a rigor to it and for me not being as social I guess some people would say I, I can be shy like mm -hmm. reserve like soft-spoken but it's like I learned very quickly that you have to you have to present yourself in a certain way so you have to come out of yourself and you can't just be comfortable with like um I'm just gonna do me and I I need to be accommodated but mm -hmm. it's like um it, it kind of sucks to hear but it it is like a reality where people say either like some people will say black people don't do this or women don't do that because they've never been exposed to it but at times it, it's freeing to see when someone's like hey i want to do this but i'm just mm -hmm. going to go pursue it i'm not thinking about what i look like what other people that are like me look like there but actually learning to be comfortable in your own skin but i'm glad you were able to speak to that to that young lady while you were there mm -hmm. and she was even able to ask the question because some yes. people wouldn't even ask the question it's just Absolutely. like this is what i've been told and that's kind of what i'm going to live by and it's like you just keep doing life and you feel kind of aggravated but you can't put your finger on like what's really bothering you or like why you can't get over a hump so to speak mm -hmm. but it, it's it's cool to hear that from you because it's like that is a challenge and just math in particular being able to explain that because mm -hmm. if you have like it makes a world of difference if you have a good teacher versus you have a bad teacher because someone could tell you you're never going to be anything you can't do this you don't need to do this so then you just do what everybody else does and it's yes. like people have their preferences they have their um the default but it's like it's kind of cool to do something where you don't see other people that look like you and other people may be encouraged by you. But then it's like when, at least for me, I found it recently when I'm doing what I'm doing, I don't think about like, where does my, I don't think of like, Oh, I'm a black guy doing this. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to do this thing that like I took interest in I'm studying and I'm, I'm kind of exploring it. I happen to be black cool and even when somebody else that's black meets me they're like oh you're this kind of black person and it's like <laughs> no i have no clue what you're talking about so it's like you made a whole bunch of assumptions about yes. me and i'm like I, I don't know what we're talking about i'm yes. like please educate me because it's mm -hmm. like there's there's such um there's such like a broad spectrum of things in the world where it's like there, there's just so much opportunity of things to learn so it's like mm -hmm. that, that's amazing like teaching is is kind of near and dear to my heart because it's it's um a childhood nickname for me so anytime oh, yeah. i see a teacher or someone that takes pride in teaching I'm, it always warms my heart it's great to know yeah it's it's uh it's tough but it's also like i mean statistically you do what you see right like women become teachers because that's what they see there's more women as teachers absolutely um our school um uh, that i work for now is like realizing we need more black male teachers we need them to stay we need yeah. them to be front facing and like there's a big push to try to get more black educators and in, uh into the building to teach and i was part of the hiring committee and i was trying to to help with that as well and it's uh it's hard it's really hard because yeah I mean, just imagine you go to any university and like, let's say you're a woman and you go into engineering school and you see like 50 guys and you're like the <laughs> only girl. You're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember those classes for me and I felt bad, you know, like, oh my gosh. And my cousin was a civil engineer in mm. India mm. and like it was times 10 over there because way, way less women were pursuing anything engineering, mm. let alone education. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, I had one girlfriend and that's what we just literally stuck together the whole time. Yeah. And she was like, it was, it could have been miserable if I didn't have someone, 
but at least she was a girl and like understood where I was going from uh, going through. Yeah. Um, so it's like having those support systems in those areas is just as important as getting more black kids and Mexican uh, students and, and Latin Latinx and Indians all into college. That's great. You got them there. But how do you yeah. keep them there? How do you right. like allow them to thrive and be who they want to be? Right. Um, so that's my next venture is like, how do I go into university mm-hmm. to like continue to inspire um, you know, uh, people of color and women to like, Hey, stick with it. You got this. And if you need yeah. anything, I'm here for you. Yeah. that That's awesome. Because like recently, I, I guess see, things seem to be more and more political for ever. And like, it, it kind of annoys me and it's like nails on a chalkboard, but I'm like, I feel like the conversation's done a disservice a lot of times because I'm like, you're people when they speak they're they're speaking to a, a challenge or an issue but i'm like may, maybe they're they're not asking smart questions or they're, they're not asking well thought out questions to be like keep keep going on that keep digging it's not just like why are there not people here or like why do they not believe they can but okay yes. once once you get here how are you going to be different? Are you just going to expect to be the same person, have mm-hmm. the same mindset and not change anything about yourself? It's like, okay, there's something there that doesn't have me in it. When I go there, I'm going to put my flavor to it. I'm going to do this. It's like, okay, maybe you can do that, but maybe you can also understand why something works the way it, it works without like undermining it. But maybe developing something that helps everybody else that's there mm-hmm. thrive and to be like oh wow like without this person we wouldn't have known that we don't need to sit here and do long division like okay we have this program that works for us like we can do that like now instead of past talking past each other we can use psychology and engineering mm-hmm. and like we can use public speaking skills and actually know how to communicate our ideas like the the thing for me that was uh maybe I'd say sad and interesting at the same time to see like where you grow and where other people haven't grown is when you do group presentations. <laughs> and it's like you see the people that are very smart and the professor at the beginning, uh we had we had this class where they intentionally brought a writing professor with an engineering professor. And she would basically tear up our work to show us like here's the gaps in the mistakes. Like if you give a chart or if you give statistics, you need to have basic things like titles, headings, things like you have to describe what's there for someone that's never done engineering a day in their life. And you don't want to, you don't want to bore them as you're talking. You want to get to the point, state the facts, interest them in like coming along with you. You want to tell them a a straightforward story. And it's like some people they seem to take it as I do what I want. Like I'm going to do things my way and like forget your suggestions and all that. Like I'm going to do it the way I understand it to be. So it's, they say when you're presenting in a group, if this person's going to start, once they stop speaking, don't have them jump in after someone's presentation. Like this isn't a, a barber tech or a, a barbershop quartet where like one person singing and the other person sings. And it's like harmonize. It's like, just keep it simple <laughs> and then just small things like that it's it's encouraging to see where things fit together and teachers that actually take the time to think about what they're going to teach you about and then when they get the feedback they're able to adjust and not just be like this is what i'm going to teach if you don't like it i'm failing you get out of my <laughs> class it's like uh, that sucks yeah yeah, yeah it's it's I like to think that no matter where I go, I'm not happy with what has been, you know, and like, if you're hiring me to be in a mold into, this is what our teachers do, or this is what my company does. That's not me. I always question why I'm like, this is engineering me. I want to be efficient. You know, like, I don't want to teach something five times and they still don't understand it. I don't got time for that. Okay. Yeah. But what I do have time for is teaching it twice and saying, wait, what didn't you understand specifically point to that? Oh, that, that radicalizing the denial. Okay, makes sense. I got you. Here's a video, right? Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful part about technology nowadays. You're not alone teaching these things. Math, as you know, as everyone knows, has been around forever. <laughs> and 
why are we all standing on a whiteboard, writing everything down like our professors did? You don't learn. You're not learning anything. You're just writing. Yeah. And most kids are mimicking. And like engineering is not about mimicking. It's about thinking. And if you want to be an engineer, you got to think. Like if I gave you X plus Y equals this, now I say X plus Y plus Z equals this. Are you going to trip out? Are you going to flake? Like just I'm out, I can't. Or are you going to be like, wait, that's interesting. How can I use what I have to get to where I need to be? Right. And that's what engineering is about. It's not about a specific uh, a math set. It does, math's whatever. You can get that with Wolfram Alpha, you know, all those things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the why behind it. So like even these complex like factoring, polynomials, yeah. So scary for everybody. And I, I challenge, I went to, to the department, I was like, why are we doing this? Like, oh, it's in the curriculum. And <laughs> like, like, where are you going to use this in real life? Where are you going to, we have computers for that, right? They're like, well, it's important for calculus. I was like, that's great. Half these kids are not going to calculus, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to spend more time on graphing and moving graphs and understanding how graphs look like. And like, for instance, uh, we did the, uh, the logarithmic scale of COVID deaths mm. and COVID cases. Like, why does it look different and exponential than logarithmic? Mm. Now go out in society and figure out how we can do a log and exponential graph and look at the differences. Why does it look like that? What's the base? T- like, those are the questions we need to ask and spend way more time on than yeah. here's factoring, here's division, here's that. That's not what an engineer does. Right. Don't care for that. It's the why behind it. And it's hard. It's so hard for high school people to unlearn the bad habits of give me the answer, give me the answer. Yeah. Um, but that becomes better for them. Yeah, definitely. I I think if I'm always grateful for my first um, English 101 professor at Southern Poly, I don't know if you ever had him. Um, I think it's Dr. Iraj Abmedvar. I had mm-hmm. him for English 101 and I had him for world history. And it completely blew my mind what he taught me in four months that I didn't learn in four years of high school. Uh And he didn't come into the class with a judgment of you should already know this because Mm -hmm. that's what our high school teachers would say every single day. And I was (laughs) like, I wish you would actually teach me what I need to know instead of reinforcing what I don't know. And then verbally spanking me for what I don't know and it's like it could be a thing of like stress I don't know what they have like now thinking as an adult I was like I don't know what they have going on personally in their lives like they could be on edge they might have been doing this 30 years 40 years 15 years five years and they're just like at their wits end it's like I got to get these kids through this program get them through the system and so on and so forth but like being introduced to how to write story like how to form an argument or Mm. have a debate or a discussion where it doesn't have to land on a conclusion where like there's a winner and a loser but it's like being able to have dialogue or to see different perspectives and like listen to the other person without like being offended or convincing them that your idea is right and it's the only idea that matters it's like just seeing those things come back to me like through therapy or just like in my personal life where it's like something happens and I have to ask myself like did that offend me like why did it offend me it's Mm -hmm. like can I sit with that for a minute and just be like this this will pass it's not the end of the world and I know how to get over this I don't have to I don't have to wear this like a, a weight around my neck and have it just like drag me down all the time. But it's it's just remembering those little things and being able to piece them together. But just having someone to um, just uncover something for a minute to be like, let's think about this differently. And that yes. just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Yeah, perspective is a powerful word. You said that, I mean, that's life right there, right? Like if you zoom out, you're like, you made it this far, you got this, you know? And like, there's kids that I get, there are straight A students that come into my class and get A's, great. Mm -hmm. There's kids are straight A students, they get a B and they cry, they ball their eyes out with a B. And I'm like, I'm so glad you have that opportunity to do it in my class Mm -hmm. because I know how to handle this and I know you're safe, you're taken care of and you're going to be fine. Yeah. And and I tell the kids that have straight A's, you're going to have some adversity, but I'd rather you have it in my class 
because I've seen some teachers out there and I'm like, they don't care, you know, like, like let's, let's be real, you know, and, and there's yeah. the teachers that have been there for 30 years or 20, like you said, whatever, but it's also like, why say kids should know this coming into here? Why don't you say this instead? Kids should know this, but I'm here to help those that don't mm -hmm. so that we all can thrive together. I'm all about classroom, um, vibes right like if you vibe out it is so much fun if the kids are all at the same level right it's like the best thing ever but it takes months of work and it's called low floor high ceiling tasks mm -hmm. low floor meaning i don't assume nothing like x plus x equals 2x i don't think you know that and that's fine we're gonna do x plus x equals 2x and x plus s x equals x squared mm -hmm. and you're gonna tell me why one is more correct than the other and you're going to explain to each other. And then we're going to go to the board and you're going to explain to other people. They're going to debate about why that's the case. And then you're going to understand that sometimes you can be right and wrong. Mm -hmm. You got to be humble about it. Yeah. And you're going to be like, oh, it makes sense. Thank you for that perspective. And then we walk away. That's more valuable than sitting down and rote regurgitation of just crap that we just don't care about and yeah. saying, oh, plug it into the formula. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> just right until your hand cramps up and you're just like oh my god this is a this is a ap class this is an ib class this is a graduate um, course oh my god i'm doing all this work and it's like oh, no so you didn't glue. actually you didn't actually learn anything you didn't oh. learn how to think and now no. when a, pro a problem presents itself it's like what do i do what are, what where's I the help I get to college and professors don't really care much or like uh you have recitation like those TAs are like you know burnt out too yeah. right it's like oh my gosh and it's just so humbling to go through that experience you know and it's I feel like it's my duty as, as an educator to to have that experience quickly for them yeah I'm like yo you're gonna pay so much we're right next to Northwestern University top tier mm -hmm. school some kids are going there some kids are like I'll never get there that's totally fine but that keeps me in perspective of like, yo, this shit gets harder. Yeah. And it's going to be how you react to that. Because if you're not resilient, you're going to drop out. You're going to waste a lot of time, of money, and then you're going to be lost. But be lost here because I got you. We're going right. to understand it together and we're going to vibe out. How's that, how's that been received by the students and other faculty at the school? Uh, when I first got hired at the school, I definitely felt imposter syndrome because I felt like that wasn't the culture. But that was because I thought other people thought that I was weird and I was like off the cuff and like blah, blah, blah. Right. And I was like, no one cares what you think. You're here for a reason. My mentor teacher was like, we hired you to be you. Don't be anybody else. And I was like, damn. OK, bet. Mm -hmm. So uh, the kids are definitely the, the straight A students are they hate it. It's the best. I love it. <laughs> Like, just give it to me. No, I'm not giving you the answer. Like, <laughs> uh, I also teach engineering uh, as well. So like intro to engineering and math. So like nice. intro engineering kids are like the straight A students going to this, going to get whatever it is. And mm -hmm. they're just like love, just making them mad. Because um, that's the thing about Georgia Tech and those kids made me mad. Yeah. Like, ooh, I have the power. Uh, <laughs> because they think they know everything. And it yeah. just humble it. Like, we're going slow. And it, you know this, uh, as we get older, we understand that just understanding it yourself is like one level. Mm -hmm. You communicating your understanding to somebody else is the highest level. Yeah. And those kids that are straight A students that I've seen in my experience can't explain worth anything. They understand it their way and yeah. they know that's the way and that's it. But when yeah. they explain to other people, they get annoyed and like, oh my gosh, you don't understand. I'm like, yes, yeah. perfect, struggle. You know, yeah. like, there it is. <laughs> That's why it takes me back to that presentation time when it's mm -hmm. like senior design project or it's this thing oh. that, and it's like, you could kind of see how people group themselves where for me, I remember the transfer students kind of got the side eye where it's like mm. the this kids that were the geniuses are like, I've been here. I put in years, my freshman year. I'm the one that's taking linear algebra and calculus two in the yep. same semester. And I'm like, I'm like, and? all respect. <laughs> I, I'm like, I wouldn't have done that. But like, again, kind of going to some of that imposter syndrome where it's that, I don't know if people feel this or that, but at some point it's like, you can't care. But I kind of left, it's like you leave the door open to where, mm -hmm. 
all the transfer students are willing to work together. And like some of the other um, students that went to tech from their first year on to graduation, it's like they learned that the ones that were at least cool to hang out with, everyone was of the mindset of like, you get further by working with other people. Like you have to do the job yourself, like test time, no one's there to help you and you have to learn the material enough to be able to take the test effectively and to think on the fly when the problems are different. And it's like, this wasn't what you taught in class, but it's like, if you learn the principles that were taught, you know what to do. It's like, yes. it's, it's not different. It's different, but it's not different. And it's mm -hmm. like seeing the people that got it and went on mm -hmm. and like did well in their presentations, but seeing the people that were like extra cocky and then when it was time to present and get their ideas across, everyone's kind of like, you don't know what you're talking about. Professor doesn't know what you're talking about. And now you got egg on your face. You're mad. You're frustrated. And it's like, you're really frustrated at yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, nope, nobody did this to you. But like, you're, you're having to sit with the reality of like, these are my actions. And like, it might not happen in that moment. It might happen like 10 years later. And, and if you choose to reflect back on that, but it's like, seeing that it's, it's like a mini, um, poke at that yeah. type of person but it's like it's a nice humbling in a way to yes. be that you you get what you want out of life but sometimes you also have to learn how to get it and you're not always going to get what you want when mm -hmm. you want it like you got to learn patience you got to learn to be humble you got to learn how to learn and just yeah. like when something doesn't go your way, you're not a child. You're not a two-year-old. You don't throw a tantrum. It's it's like, it's like we we act different as adults, and like you, we try. Yeah, we try. <laughs> That's funny. There's two things off of that because I love the uh, how would you say? Uh, there's something you just said that I just slipped my mind. Uh, like you're oh, like just willingness to understand that you don't know everything. Like the moment you think you know, you stopped yeah. learning. And if you stop learning, you should be the smartest kid in the world, the yeah. smartest person in the world. And you're not, no one is, you know? And the, like you said, being humble about that experience is such a beautiful thing. And like when students are like smart, mm -hmm. but like good people mm -hmm. and like helping other students without me saying it, I'm like, that's what's all about. Like th this is going to work, you know? Yeah. Um, and funny that you said two year olds tantrums. I, I'm in a summer camp and I, I, I coach tennis or I, it's an activity. It's not like a coaching mm -hmm. tennis, but uh, they range from three to 11. Uh, and wow, talk about tantrums, you know? And it's so interesting because I, I love like psychology is so awesome to me because it's just like there's groups of kids, right? They're three, four years old and they can barely hold a racket up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when they hold it, they're just like, ah, you know, the door all over the place. <laughs> very literal right the moment you say all right touch your toes i'll touch the toes touch it like they're doing everything mm -hmm. but oh, this is crazy so this girl we had this drill where like you basically golf the ball into like a hula hoop mm -hmm. very simple and if you if you got better you went level one level two level three and all all the kids like 99 percent of them are all having a great diet oh my god so hard blah 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 one kid goes up to level three and every level, she came up to me like, hey, hey, look, look, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. I'm like, that's great. Continue going. And then she got to level three. And then all of a sudden, people started passing her. Mm. Mind you, this is a four-year-old. And she just sat down. She's like, I'm done. And I was like, why? What happened? She's like, everyone's passing me. And I was like, that's fine. Why are you looking at other people? She said, well, they're better than me. I'm like, no, they're not. They just have a can attitude. You have a can not attitude. You can do it. So she's like, okay, fine. She gets up and does again and fails. And just sits back down again, like literally goes to the corner mm -hmm. and like, huh. And four years old. And I, I did the best that I could to talk to her. And this was a fascinating part. At the end, she uh, comes up to me and like all the girls, um, all the girls are, like, around me and like, oh, hey, good job. Like, I'm just like pointing out, good job doing this. good job. And she like butts into the front and she's like, do you know, I'm coached by a professional tennis player. And I'm in green ball and I'm actually really good at tennis. And I was like, wow, this girl like gave up when things got hard. Mm -hmm. But the moment she was leaving the situation was just like, I'm better than everybody. Just so you know, 
and then walks away. And I was like, dang, that is actually kind of sad. Yeah. As a four-year-old to have that. And like, we all are a, like a bigger version of our smaller self yeah. of like the imposter syndrome times 10 as a four-year-old. And imagine that as an adult. Yeah. So it's just interesting where we are, what we are as kids, but we have to like go back to that level and be like, oh, wait, you're okay. You're taken care of. It's a fun thing. It's all good. And then you kind of go from there. And therapy is a great way to do that. And I'm glad that you talked about it. And I'm also in therapy and it helps a lot by yeah. reflecting why we are who we are. And I, and I mean, to that example that you gave, it's like, it's easy to judge and to be like, oh, maybe mm -hmm. that's, that's um, the preppy kid or kid mm -hmm, or yeah. her parents kind of made her that way but it's like some things you're just not aware of like mm -hmm. you just especially at four years old you're not going to yeah. have the the intellect of like a 30 year old or like just like having the opportunity to have someone explain something to you and you actually be able to be like oh yeah i get that it's it's the reason why you don't talk to a kid and they're just like yeah you're right i don't i don't need that cookie right now what, what was i even bawling about you yeah, you could. That'd be kind of weird if they acted that it's, way. It's like, <laughs> uh, like, let me, let me go figure my life out. A four-year-old just had an intellectual conversation with me right now. I, I don't know. I don't know if we're being visited by aliens or what's uh, going it's on. Definitely an alien. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an, it's very interesting because I've I've taught now like all ages and mm -hmm. it is so cool to see and like. Uh, is a funny story I tell people when I got into teaching. I was like, I, uh, corporate adults acted mm -hmm. like kids with yeah. their high school like banter, and I was like, I'm yeah. just gonna go teach high schoolers. Like you guys act <laughs> like it, so I'm gonna go teach high school. <laughs> nice. So, so you have you landed on teaching high schoolers. Is that been like your whole teaching career so far, or yeah. have you thought about going to lower or higher? That's a that's a great question. Yeah, and I appreciate you saying lower or higher. Mm -hmm. uh oftentimes uh, i will post on linkedin about like uh in corporate when you say i am this mm -hmm. but i'm going to be this and it's always something higher mm -hmm. and uh when a corporate person asks me like hey you're teaching are you going to be a professor i'm like why oh, why not just be a teacher like is that that's okay you know right like right. you would be department head absolutely not i don't deal with adults <laughs> like, you, what, what do you mean <laughs> Uh, like, ugh, I got out of that, you know? Yeah. Um, and so you're the first person that said lower or high. That's awesome. And I appreciate that because, yeah, I thought about little kids and then I did the summer camp and I'm like, no way in heck. <laughs> it was like, I'm like, just imagine just a tennis court full of four year olds and you're telling them to do a task that you think is simple. Go to the cone and back. And it's yeah. just chaos. Like I can't imagine teaching them. And this is only like 30 minute chunks. I can't imagine doing that for eight hours. And it's funny because the elementary school teachers tell me about that, about high school teachers. And mm -hmm. we say, right, like, it's just the same yeah, perspective. Yeah. Like we can't do that. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll be, a, I'll be a high school teacher for, for some time. I try middle school out. That's too much for me. Mm -hmm. um, my, my bread and butter is 11th grade because I feel like what I say is more, like it, it resonates with them more because they're kind of like out the door like SATs, ACTs yeah. and um I have a big uh philosophy of like you're not ready to learn until you're ready to accept things. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't ready to understand things that my parents told me growing up and all of a sudden I'm 30 I was like, "Oh wow, you're right about that." Like I was ready yeah. to receive that right at 30 right? instead of them telling me at 10 and I'm like saving up ew I want to buy a bubble gum and then I'm like whoa I could have made a million dollars if I spent five bucks of my salary you know uh so people are people don't learn to they're willing to learn so uh I yeah so I've been but I've been teaching different things I've been coaching mm -hmm. basketball yeah I coached tennis I coached uh cross country like a little volunteer thing to see if I liked it mm -hmm. uh the tennis coach at a summer camp I do philosophy classes to uh students like teach them no, sorry philanthropy classes mm -hmm. um so i teach them about philanthropy uh through mm -hmm. an organization and like how to give back and like do research and like what does a philanthropist do mm -hmm. um and then i just recently got a uh, opportunity that i might teach at a uh a university uh some math courses there as well so uh, i just love teaching i love education and I, I encourage everyone to be like what's the highest level of thing that you want to do and mine's education I don't mm -hmm. care what I do as long as it's education and right. I'll be happy regardless. So that's where I will be forever. I like that. I, well, maybe you can help me 
help me understand how you pick the different things that you're doing now, like from the time that you decided, okay, I went through engineering. I did get an experience with in sales and I, I see that part of teaching is what I like in this. Mm -hmm. So now let me go pursue education. And now maybe I get an idea of who I want to teach, what I want to teach, mm -hmm. like what impact I have. I, I thought it was very key when you said 11th grade, because it's like, it's what you landed on. It, it's really a pivotal point for most young adults where it's like, okay, do I go to college to get a degree, to get a job, or do I get a trade or do I, and it's like being able to have an impact on someone's life to be like, well, you actually have a choice in this. There's what mm -hmm. your parents say. That's there's what's ex expected of you. But like, here's a chance for you to actually think on it. And whatever you think may not be this decision at 16, 17, 18 years old is for the rest of your life forever. For the rest of your life, yeah. It's like, that's a scary thing to be like 11th grade. I, I applied to all these colleges. I, I got to get in. I got to get this grade. It's like, there's that stress, that pressure yes. of like, I'm the team captain. I've got to be a scholar athlete. Yes. I got it. It's like, how did you get to this point? And also looking into things like philanthropy mm -hmm. from the time that you decided on Arizona State University. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was. It started with just like, I love teaching. Like in Georgia Tech, I was uh, tutoring my friend, which is funny because she did better in tests than I did, even though I tutored her. Uh, <laughs> we're still friends to today. And she's awesome. Uh, and I just realized I'm going to start with the basics and I don't go into anything until I research it. So, uh, or like go and volunteer my time. And that's why I decided in math and engineering, um, actually math first. And then I realized that engineering is being taught to high schoolers. It's like a thing called PLTW. And it's a course that engineers and teachers made together to inspire oh, high that, school students. Is that Project Lead the Way? Project or? Lead the Way. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's what I did. That's how I got into it. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. I love that you said that because that's, uh, yeah, it's a lot, some students that go through that pathway get inspired for that. So I teach the intro course to that. Nice. Um, and or I did in Arizona State, or sorry, when I was in Arizona. And uh, it just kept going from there. I was like, I love teaching in different aspects, like coaching. I coach middle school basketball. Mm. And that's so interesting in its own way because I can only handle handle middle schoolers that I realize for myself mm. in basketball because I love that. And I love the intricacies of it. And like, okay, how do I move this player? How do I get this person to understand that he could be this great? And like, it's a different way of educating. Gotcha. Uh, philanthropy is a whole different ball game too. It's like, how do these kids that are labeled as rich kids, right, mm -hmm. understand that philanthropy is such a big deal and, like, you can't just be, you know, white savior complex and be like, oh, look, I saved the world and, like, call it a day. Like, you don't just yeah. wipe your hands off of that. Right. Um, so just inspiring in that way, right? And then coaching cross country of, like, it seems so easy. Like, they, I didn't realize cross country is a 5K. That's not much, you know? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I do, like, half marathons here. You're like, what's going on? And they're like, mm -hmm but they do this for a different reason and like how to be physically fit, mentally fit while running past your, 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 like, like the past the wall. Mm -hmm. So it's all different ways of educating that I really appreciate. Uh, and it keeps me excited every day um, of just doing different avenues of like my, my, my purpose, like my purpose is to educate, but different ways to do that. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome because to me, it seems like you really took engineering like past the phase of just being a job and you really incorporated you incorporated that into yourself it's like mm -hmm. going through the engineering school working an engineering job those aren't the only things that make you an engineer it's like you've already mm -hmm. gone through the process that just makes you that for life and it's you you found the things that kind of called to you in your life and you've gone the extra step of being like okay how do i make it fit in this realm like i can mm -hmm. teach high school kids math and engineering but i can teach middle school kids basketball and i can teach affluent kids how to actually negotiate their resources with the people that may potentially need them mm -hmm. and it's like i think that's awesome thank you yeah it's uh yeah it's, it's great like it, it, a lot of things a lot of good things happen when you realize where you want to be like if you want to be an investment like banking right it's not investment banking it's i want to be in finance like just have that and i tell the kids like what industry excites you 
right? Like, I don't say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think that's a stupid question. Um, because if you ask me, I've been an engineer, look at me now. So like, am I a disappointment? <laughs> yeah. Did I mess up? Right? Like, no, you didn't mess up. It just didn't think about the bigger picture. And my bigger picture, if I were to look back is I would have problem solved. Mm -hmm. I want to be there. I want to inspire others to be like, you can do this. And that avenue is education. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to get through to students of the next generation to think that they can do anything that they put their mind to. That is it. You yeah. cannot just, you know, you can't just yell at the wall and be like, oh my God, like I, I work at this engineering firm and all the interns are like stupider than Lash. It's like, no, mm -hmm. do something about it. Right. And take away pride, take away money. I lost so much money going into to education i don't think mm. about that because yeah. guess what i'm back to where i was mm. money wise i'm so much happier i love what i do and like pride is such a big deal like when investment bankers become something else like oh my gosh man i worked 100 hours and like i feel like a failure because i just switched careers it's like no no no, no. you feel great you did what you got to do in your three years of life now move on and be okay yeah. with that that's dope i i guess would you say did engineering help you develop who you wanted to be? Absolutely. Yeah. It challenged my perspective. And I love that word perspective. Mm -hmm. And combine that with psychology. Oh my gosh. Like sales engineering is what it was called. It allowed me to be like, I sell differently to a CEO than I do an architect, than I do an engineer, than I do a purchasing guy. Yeah. But they all have to talk to each other. They all have to say yes what how do i manipulate not manipulate but like kind of work with the worth what i'm given mm -hmm. and engineer my way through that right i have a kid who's defiant the first thing i say is not duh, 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 duh. no it's hey are you okay are you sleeping are you mm -hmm. eating how's life at home you know so it's like a that was what um engineering was to me and that's definitely how i can view the bigger picture of things where a lot of uh, people that are teachers that are, haven't been in my shoes mm -hmm. you know they're like oh this kid should know this and therefore they don't they're they're dead to me like not dead to me but like they're just like yeah they'll be fine they're yeah. they'll figure it out not my so problem. that's why not my, exactly not my problem is gonna be the next teacher's problem i'll pass them with a d minus <laughs> so that they'll go into the next class and i've yeah. seen a lot of those yeah that's awesome well let me not keep you too much but i appreciate your time and just it was great catching up and being able to do this because it's like, it's, I've been, I've been meaning to do this and just like, just continuing to reach out and just see where people are and, and even what I can learn because I've thought about teaching before, but you encouraged me to look at it differently and just wanting to be able to give back to people mm -hmm. and especially younger kids to be like, okay, Hey, I was in your position before and mm -hmm. just, learning how to actually reach someone that's not where you are, but helping them to with a little bit of the information that I have with where they may want to go and being able to step back and just celebrate their win without it being like, look at what I did, but like mm -hmm. actually learning to appreciate people is, is something that I'm gaining from, from this year in 2023 and just going forward. I'm like, regardless of what happens if a car breaks down or something like whatever i'm like i'm better than i was and yeah. a lot a lot of life has been lived very well yeah and the best part about what you said is you know you can still do what you do you can yeah. give back and, and different you still work your nine to five and and, and tutor or whatever after you know and that's what i did like i worked after five o'clock i went to go tutor and like i still gave back in that way so uh it's it's great because America is amazing. And this is the last thing I'll leave with because I think this is uh, awesome. Like we we tend to be like, oh my gosh, America, pol politics, this and that. And I'm like, dude, America is awesome. You can pivot to whatever the heck you want to do. You can do and be whatever you want to be. As long as you just be like, this is good for me and not what society wants. I want the social media is the right post. Like if I become this, do I look cooler on social media? Mm -hmm. um, right? Like there are yeah. countries out there or you're frowned upon in society if you become this, 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 or this. And in America, it's not that way because you perceive other people that might think that way. Mm -hmm. And you can pivot as much as you want. And if you're not pivoting and readjusting and thinking about that, you're not living because sometimes you're not happy and that's okay. 
But what are you going to do about that happiness? And America allows you to be like, hey, I can go back to school. Go ahead. There's scholarships. Go ahead. Figure out something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I love America. And I appreciate my parents to to give me that opportunity because in India, it was not that way. It was a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or nothing else. Like that's their mantra there. Right, right. And at least in America, it's doctor, lawyer, engineer, or you choose, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I appreciate the opportunity, Asher, and it was, uh, it was a pleasure. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, have a great day. <laughs>